If you'd like to learn how to use the user input service to capture key presses such as these, keep watching it and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Hi everybody and welcome to Roblox Snippets. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the user input service uh, to capture keystrokes and make things happen. Uh, to start with, in our workspace we will just come up the top and create a part uh, so that we can, we'll just change the brick color so we can see uh, that something's happening when we press the key. So create a part and um, we, we can rename this if you like to uh, my part. It's not going to play a major role in what's going on here but uh, we will just make a couple of changes down here and let's make it uh, a cube. So say 5 by 5 by 5 and we'll just move it up so it's sitting up above the, the base plate there and come down the bottom to anchored and that will do for us to be able to work with it now uh, if you've never used user input service before uh, there's a couple of things you you just need to keep in mind because uh, besides keystrokes there are a number of things you can do with user input service uh, and I'll be covering those in other videos however uh, the first thing to know is that because you're dealing with users then they are coming from the client side uh, which means you need to put your scripts or your initial scripts for user input service in a folder over here that is represented on the client side. So trying to do user input service in the workspace um, won't work. You need to come down and use one of the other folders and we're going to start off in the starter player folder and in the starter player scripts. So there are other places you can do this. You can put it in the character, the starter GUI, replicated storage, etc. But we'll do it here uh, for today. So in starter player scripts, uh, click on the plus sign and we want to add a local script. All right. So add a local script and that will let us run on the client machine. All right. Let's uh, change the name of our local script to user input local so that we know that that's where our code is coming from all right so user input uh, service is a service so we're going to create a short variable uis for user input service equals game and then a colon get service inverted commas and user input service just below this, we'll create a debounce variable. So a boolean, we'll set it to true, debounce. And this will just let us control our script so that it's, uh, it's only running once, uh, uh, once each time that we uh, press a key. Now, to constantly monitor um, whether the player is pressing a button, we can also use another service that is called the run service. So just up above um, our user input service, create another variable here, rs for run service. And we'll say game, get service, and run service. And that's going to, we're going to make use of this to check a function um, and check constantly whether the, the player is pressing a key or not. And the way that works is down below here, we're going to, well, just here, we'll create a function. So local function, and we'll say, just call this get key uh, press. And we're going to call this function using the run service. So run service down the bottom, and then dot rendered step. Okay, so. This is uh, an event that happens. So if you have a look over here, fires every frame prior to the frame being rendered. So in the game, um, this will run very quickly. So if you're running at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second, then this is running 30 times in a second or 60 times in a second. So that's how often it is checking running this fun function. All right. So let's uh, add that in. So rendered step and each time we want to connect okay the function up above here so we'll start typing that in get key press now you'll notice that it uh, doesn't have any parentheses it's just the name and that will run this constantly in here 
So inside of our function, this is where we'll make use of the user input service. And we need to check um, for input, right? which makes sense. So user, if we start typing in here, user input service, and then dot input began. So some sort of input is happening. And when that happens from the client, then we want to put a colon and we want to connect a function. And this takes two parameters, this particular function. The first one is input. So that represents what is it that the player is doing. Are they clicking their mouse? Are they pressing a key? And the second one is, we'll call it busy, but it's a Boolean. All right. And if you have a look at uh, the help just up above here, game processed event. Now, basically, busy means that uh, if we're looking for a key press, let's say J, but the user decides that they want to talk to their friend Jason and they, they start typing in uh, chat, then we don't want our J function in here to trigger while they're talking in chat. And that's what this is all about here. So um, J will only function when the user is doing something in the main screen uh, other than typing in chat uh, or something else that uses the key and um, so that it, it, it helps us run our code only when we want it to be run. All right. So now we can use that to create a conditional statement. So will you say if db up the top here, so our dbounce value is true and all right, input dot and now what we're looking for is key code. Okay, so dot key code, we say equals to, and we'll use an enum dot key code, and then dot whichever key it is that you want to make use of. So I'm going to use uh, J, um, that's what I used before. And then we can say and not busy then. All right, so I'll get rid of this over here so you can see the whole line. That's what we want in order to um, get their code to run when the player presses J and they're not in chat. So inside of this code then, we firstly need to set DB equal to false. And then we can go ahead and do something. Um, so in this case, let's um, change the part in the workspace. So we can say game.workspace dot my part dot brick color equals and we'll just change it to a random brick color so make that a capital capital R to make a random brick color and we'll also print uh, what the key was that was pressed so in this case you could uh, you could type in here um, well we can just put in J key pressed you could also print uh, the input.keycode there if you want. Uh, I might put that at the end just to see input.keycode, just to see if that will print out uh, that directly. All right, and that's enough to uh, start working with. Now, the only other thing that we want to do is reset our DB here. So directly under this, we could say task.wait, say for half a second, and then we can set DB back to true. Now the reason we're doing that is that, uh, remember, this is running 30 or 60 times a second, so it will run through this um, multiple times in the time that you press the button, and we usually only want it to run just the once and control, uh, how, well, how quickly uh, we can continue to press the button. All right, and that is uh, the entire a bit of code there in order to make this work. So let's click on File and Save and we'll give it a run. All right, I'm in the game and if I hit J, you'll see we get down the bottom here, J, J uh, key press, and this was the comma where it said e, enum.keycode J. So it's showing you that, and if I, if I spam hit J, you'll see that only every half a second does it let me run the code. If you found this video useful, subscribe now. For more information about my online courses, go to mrbrendanross.com.